Hi, my name's Mike from Kick the Table. We're here at uh, PAX Australia, the Greater Than Games booth with Christopher Bedell, uh, who's been demoing Spirit Island, which is an upcoming game from Greater Than Games. Christopher, you want to tell us about the game and how it works? Absolutely. So Spirit Island is a cooperative game in which you and your friends play as spirits, working together to drive invaders off of your homeland. Um, you start off as spirits of the wind or spirits of the air, the earth, the lightning, the uh, the trees, uh, the, the beasts themselves. You're spirits of something you know native and innate to the land. Um, but then when these invaders show up on their ships and begin moving in from the coast and sending in explorers and building settlements and building cities, um, they're blighting the land and you have to, to drive them off and, and make the land your own again. It's a really great concept. It's from the designer Eric Royce who designed Fealty and we're really excited to get to publish this game. Um, so, just to show you uh, one of the coolest components, the board for the game, if you were playing a two-player or a two-spirit game, your board would get lined up like this, with your coasts here on these sides, and each board has two of each of the land types, two jungles, two wetlands, two sands, and two hills. Um, so this is what a two-player board would look like, a two-player island would look like. For three players, or three spirits, that is, you would be playing with the three-player setup, again, with your coast on the sides and then everything moving into the, towards the center. And for a four-player, which is the game we played yesterday, yep. you've got a four-player map that looks like this and is a lot of fun and very cool. So no matter how you, no matter how many people you play with, the land itself scales to the number of players, the number of spirits. So that's very cool. Each of the spirit has a spirit panel that contains some information and really awesome artwork pending. Uh, so information on the back about their personality and uh, backstory and as well as their play style and complexity. And then on the front um, you have your setup and your special rules, but then the uh, panels, which obviously these are early prototype panels, but uh, still the layout is going to be similar in which the information on the panel also matches the turn sequence. Everybody plays simultaneously and so during the spirit phase when all the players do their things, everyone will pick a growth option by which they'll expand their presence across the map. Then they'll regain energy as per their energy track. They will then play their cards as per their card play track. And then they will use their powers, both the powers that they've put into play via card plays, as well as their innate powers that are on their uh, spirit panels. Um, with the Lightning Swift Strike spirit that we have over here, the um, presence is already on their track. And so the way their presence works is you would start with presence in a specific land. And as whenever you pick a growth option that lets you put more presence, you can either pull it from your presence track or you can pull it from your card play track. So as you expand your presence and you get more presence on the board, not only does that give you more reach to different areas of the board so you can do more things in different areas, but it also lets you gain more energy and play more cards. So. Um, the other cool thing is that the way the board setup starts is there are various uh, pieces that correspond to the various uh, elements in the game, such as there are the explorers. Um, these are all the invader pieces. There's the explorers, the settlements, and the cities. Explorers have one hit point and deal one damage. Uh, settlements have two hit points and deal two damage. Cities have three hit points and three deal, uh, deal three damage. And they start off in certain areas of the board as dictated by the map. But then there is also the Dahan. The Dahan are the native islanders. They have two hit points and deal two damage when attacked by the invaders. And the Dahan can work with the spirits to help you restore the land. Um, you can't really control the Dahan, but you can work with them and, uh, and encourage them to do helpful actions. Uh, so that's kind of the way the, the components on the board work and the way the spirits work. Uh, the AI, the way that the invaders work, is governed by the invader board that's over here at the end. And the invader board has various elements on it. I'll slide this down just so, you, so we can see it a little better. Um, where um, there are uh, the terror levels that the spirits are going to try to scare off the invaders by doing various scary things. And as the terror level increases, it will be easier to gain new victory conditions and you will gain powerful fear effects that will scare them in more ways. Then there's an event deck that randomizes things that the invaders do. That way it's not entirely predictable and entirely knowable what the invaders will be doing. And then there's the invader deck themselves. And the, and the, uh, the invader deck has, goes through various stages, stage one, stage two, and stage three. And the invader deck 
each of the cards in this deck have a terrain type on them, such as hills, so that when that terrain type enters the explore section, explorers come into the hills, and after they explore, they will build, and so then any place that they have invader presence will get new buildings, and then they will ravage any place that has invader presence. The invaders there will attack the land and attack the Dahan, and then any surviving Dahan will attack back. So you'll never know exactly where they're going to explore, but after they've explored in a land, they will then build in that land on the next turn, and the turn after that, they will ravage in that land. So you have some idea what they're going to do next, but their movements are also unpredictable. The other thing that is an uh, uh, element in the game is Blight. And Blight is added to the board from this Health of the Island card, this Blight card. But whenever Blight enters uh, land on a, on a map, it destroys Spirit Presence there, and is generally bad. Um, and if this card ever runs out of Blight, it flips over, the land is now tainted, and the game enters a new stage of, of difficulty. So the, um, those are all different elements that you can win the game by, at the beginning of the game, the only way you can win the game is by destroying all of the buildings, all the settlements and all the cities. But as the game progresses and as you go through more of the fear effects, you unlock new victory conditions. Um, but if you are falling behind and they're getting lots of blight out or progressing through their invader deck quickly, you can gain new loss conditions too. So it's a, it's a delicate balancing act. Cool. Yeah, so the game that we played yesterday, um, I played Lightning Swift Strike, which is the spirit that's laid out in front of me, and it really did feel like lightning striking all over the place. Like I was charging up, charging up, charging up, and then just firing down massive amounts of pain on the board, which was a lot of fun. Um, and all of the spirits played quite differently. So the guy to my left played uh, River Surges in Sunlight, um, which sort of slowly meandered through the board, um, but was able to charge up all the things around it very well. Yeah, he did a lot of great pushing too, where the river would <laughs> flow into an area and then push everybody out push of Push everybody area. out of that area, that yeah. Um, and Shadows Flicker Like Flame was the guy across from me. Um, so he was all over the place as well, causing a lot of fear, really scaring the, yeah. the invaders. We got quite scary towards the end, the invaders were quite fearful of us. Yeah. Uh, Christopher, who were you playing? I was playing Ocean's Hungry Grass, who's a bit more of an advanced and complicated spirit that, um, rather than li living in a specific land on the board, um, exists in the oceans. It starts out in one of the oceans and can spread to all the oceans, and can't really move f very far inland. It can grab a coastal land or two, but can't really move to the middle of the map. So I was useless in the middle of the map, but on the co coast I was very strong, and there was a lot of, hey guys, if you can send me invaders, push some guys my way, I can pull them into the ocean and eat them. Yeah, we were feeding you all, all you, afternoon. It, it was, was great. great. It was fantastic. Yeah, so um, the other cool thing is that each of the spirits starts with its own set of unique powers. Um, and because everybody plays simultaneously, it didn't feel like in some cooperative games somebody will tell everybody what to do. Um, it really sort of felt like uh, we would talk about areas of the board that we felt we could deal with and we really had to collaborate, which was really cool. Um, and during the game you start with these four basic powers, but during the game you get to progress through and get more powers, and, and your deck gets more powerful as you go. Uh, and there's these, these power progression cards which sort of tell you the order in which you should, um, for a beginner, right. which you should add these powers to your deck. Um, and this is sort of a progression of cards that will be pretty good for your first game. Absolutely. But after that, I understand you can just Right. Take, take whichever powers you kind of feel is, is right for the circumstances you're in. To a degree, yeah. When you're playing in a, in a, in a non-first-time game, rather than the power progression deck, you get there's a deck of minor cards and a deck of major cards, and whenever you gain a power, you choose whether you want a minor power or a major power. You draw the top four cards of that deck, and then you look at all of them, pick one, and discard the other three. And right. every card in the minor power deck and every card in the major power deck is unique. Right. So when you're discarding three, like those are gone. They may, they, the deck might reshuffle, but you generally are saying, okay, this is the thing that I want the most. And so it, it, it gives a cool dynamic of, you can play the same spirit ten times in a row, and you're going to have very different experiences in every yeah, game. Yeah, so you start unique and you stay unique throughout the entire game. And yeah. every game you play is going to be unique in a different way. Yes, So is cool. Yeah. Um, Christopher, this is... Um, you are the designer for Greater Than Games. Yes. This yes. is a game that is not purely your design. It's true. It helped along the way. So what is it about Spirit Island that makes you want to put the Greater Than Games logo on it and produce it? Sure. So um, I actually got to see this game at Origins uh, 2012 for the first time. Eric Royce, uh, the designer of a game called Fealty, mm -hmm. um, was working on a prototype of what would eventually become this game. And it just was so interesting to me, the concept of playing against what the usual, like, Euro-style area control sort of game is, and um, the, the ideas that he had and everything were just so brilliant, and the fact that this game seamlessly melds mechanics and thematics, like that's what Creative World Games is all about, yeah. is storytelling games that are actually mechanically excellent, and um, 
and this is this game just spoke to me so much. And so originally, Eric and I didn't really even talk about publishing at all. We just talked about the game and how cool it was, and, yep. and I had like all sorts of input about it. this is what I feel cooperative games because I have all sorts of like cooperative games must do certain things feelings. And um, and he and I went back and forth a bunch about it. And then a year later, at Origins 2013, we were hanging out and talking about it. And he's like, yeah, well, I'm talking to, um, to the publishers, and he was talking about who he was talking to, and or how that was going, and things like that. And then it kind of came down to, well, what if Greater Than Games published this game? Yeah. And, um, I, and I hadn't really specifically considered it, but I was like, you know what, I would really like that. I would love a chance to, to bring this game to life. And so he and I then went from like informally working on it to like formally working on it. Yeah. And, and uh, it's, it's been such a great process, and I am really proud to be... Um, part of this process and be publishing this game and um, and getting to work with Eric. He's a great guy. So. All right. Cool. So um, this is a prototype that you built specifically to demo the game. Yeah, yeah, when will the game be available for people to actually play with? Well, it's going to take me like, literally thousands of hours to cut out more of these by hand. But as soon as I get those all done, we'll have it up on Kickstarter. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> we're going to have a real company make the game. Um, and uh, we'll be putting that up on Kickstarter early next year, January, February, March. It's hard to say at this point, but yep. somewhere early next year. And uh, then it'll be out by the end of the year. Okay. So. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you.